Good morning and welcome to Talk State Bible. My name is Deborah. Happy Blessed New Year 2024. I just want to encourage you this morning, the beginning of the new month, January 2024. We're headed into uh, another brand new year where we get to experience every day the mercies of the Lord. And experiencing the goodness of God for you, for your family. I want to encourage you, seek him, be resolved. A lot of people are making quote unquote New Year's resolutions, but let, it, let us be resolved as the people of God to be resolved to seek the Lord and his word, to know him more, know him more even than you did yesterday. It is possible he wants to. It's through his word, the living, enduring word of God. When you open up the Bible, it's a living document. You know, Jesus says, what is eternal life? Eternal life is to know you and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So eternal life we could experience knowing who the Father is now and experience more of Christ. That's eternal life. We can reap the benefits of, of what eternal life, even now on this side of eternity. So I want to encourage you, dig deeper in the word of God, seeking to know him more, to love him more with all your heart, your soul, all your might, and doing the will of God from the heart. Has not he put the law of love in your heart? Yes, he has, and sealed you with his Holy Spirit. So I just want to encourage you, this year be resolved to read his word, spend time with him, get to know your father more now on this side of eternity, get to know more Jesus Christ through his word, hearing his heart, waiting upon daily of the Lord. He's delighted in that. So go forward and be encouraged and let that be our resolve as people of God. Well, I just want to encourage you and speak with you about the end from the beginning. At this beginning of the new year, let's talk about the end from the beginning. Well, I went to the end. The last verse of the book of the Bible in Revelation twenty two twenty one. The end. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. <laughs> And then let's go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> we can just say, blessed be the name of the Lord and end it right there. <laughs> but I just want to encourage you. Do you hear that? As the Bible closes, it says, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. And then it takes us back to the beginning. When scriptures opens up in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He is the first cause of all of his creation. I want to encourage you, remember that. Stand firm. Recall it to mind. Think about this. Remember the form of things of old, he says in Isaiah 46, 8-10. Remember this, stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. Well, we read... The verse of scripture, the last verse of the Bible in Revelation 22, verse 21, God encourages us and he tells us the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. And we as a new creation in Christ Jesus, let us stand firm in the grace that has been brought to us in Christ. Let us grow this year in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Christ. Remembering that he is God, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, John tells us 
in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And I love it. It goes on to say, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Truth is only in Christ. That's all the truth you need. He is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. He is the one who has come to give us life and life more abundantly. And we know what happened. When all of humanity was plunged into darkness and depravity and chaos, when sin entered in, when Adam and Eve chose to believe a lie, Eve was deceived when she listened to the serpent's lie rather than to the command of God? And what about Adam? God gave him the command, and yet he chose the words of his wife over the word of the Lord. Didn't Jesus tell us, too, as we fast forward, we ought to choose the word of Christ over and above even the most intimate relations. More than mother, brother, sister, friend, husband, wife. I say let us be resolved to continually choose what God says in his word over everything else, over every relationship. Because even when we do that, I find personally, everything else becomes blessed. The blessing flows onto my family. The blessing flows onto my husband. The blessing flows onto my daughter when we choose and we purpose in our mind and our heart, our will, our emotions to choose the things of God over all other things. Will it be hard at times? Yes, but the grace of the Lord abounds onto us. Tells us at the end. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all. Amen. So we go back to the beginning God, the first cause of everything. So as this year, as we look out in the unknown, the vast ocean of the unknown of 2024, and it could be quite scary as the nations are in an uproar, not only in America, when we look at the world and we see what's culminating and where it's all heading to, let us be reminded that God is in control. And even as we sail out in the unknowns, knowing that God is the first cause of all creation, and even in the end, he tells us that the grace of the Lord will be with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. God is with us. Even as we launch out into the deep in those times that we don't know what the outcome is going to be, let us be reminded that Jesus is with us. It is the counsel of the Lord that stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations, Psalms 33, 11. And continuing on in the thought of the sovereignty of God being the first cause of all creation. And how he tells us in the end that the grace of the Lord is with us. And we know that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Let us be reminded that God is sovereign. And his plans will stand For all generations, even now, even in the times of what seems to be an uproar going throughout all nations. You see, whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all the deep. Psalms 135 verse 6. And in Isaiah 43, 13, he says, also henceforth, I am he. There is none who can deliver from my hand. I work and who can turn it back? See, the enemy comes to do three things, just to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But we know that life, that the Lord has come to give life because he is the life. And he comes to give life and that much more abundantly. So seek the abundant life that is yours, beloved. The abundant life is yours now on this side of eternity, despite the unknown that we're sailing into. We know that God works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose in Christ Jesus. Even from the garden, when 
at the beginning as we think back on how they sinned and plunged humanity into sin and despair and what separated us from God. But even then, he declared the coming one who would crush Satan in the head. Satan would only bruise him in the heel. But Christ Jesus crushed the head of the serpent on the cross. And he rose from the grave on the third day. And now those who come to him in faith, confessing Jesus as Lord, believing in the heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you will be saved. And even from the beginning, it says, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, th- in, in him, things in heaven and things on the earth. This is Ephesians 1, verses 9 through 11. And in verse 11, And in him we have enta- obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. God always has a plan. (laughs) The nations are trying to go its own way, just like in the beginning where um, the serpent came to Eve and he deceived her and admitted, the serpent deceived me. But it didn't take God by surprise. God had a plan. See, from before the foundation of the world, God had a plan to send Jesus, to send Jesus who would crush Satan in the head. Make no mistake about it. Our Christ is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And the same God who created all things in the beginning, the one who made the heavens and the earth, and in the end, the last verse, it says, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. This is our God. This is who we serve. And he says, I am he. There is none who can deliver from my hand. And I am here to tell you that no one can snatch you out of the Father's hand. No matter what come what may, all things serve to give glory to God. Remember the outcome of Job. All that took place with Job. What does he say? Alas, I've only heard of you. I heard of you, but now my eyes see you. So what we go through this year, whatever come what may, be reminded. Even at the end of this day, be reminded that all things serve to give glory to God. And all things, no matter the fiery trials we go through, it's to refine you. God is refining us. Be encouraged. And may the grace of the Lord be with you all. From the one who created the heavens and the earth, our God in whom we serve is with you. And no one can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Happy, blessed 2024. The one, the eternal one who is with you. The one who knows the end from the beginning, he is with you. God bless you and have a blessed day. Amen.